So Tokyo Ghoul re changes things completely. The hard reset that Carnegie goes through traverses over to Tokyo Ghoul re and the tragedy aspect ultimately resets as well. It's not completely gone or demolished or anything like that. It's more so factory reset and it helps kind of align itself with the narrative of Tokyo Ghoul re as the narrative is completely different as the betrayal of Carnegie is completely different. So we don't want to have that over looming, very dark and depthly tragedy aspect come over to Tokyo Ghoul Re and attach itself to Carnegie because he's no longer Carnegie at the beginning. He's higher, say. So the perception of tragedy is starting fresh. And once again, it's actually a different perspective. Hayase is on the opposing end of the story. He is now a CCG detective and a rather good one at that. He has a lot of people at his disposal and a lot of people behind him that know about his true nature, where he comes from and what he originally was. He himself is riddled with deja vu and the idea that he doesn't remember who he was but ultimately has these flashbacks or these impulsive ghoul-like moments that allows him to tap into his innate abilities that makes him very uncontrollable and rather wild is that one line, two line connection to that previous tragedy, to that previous reset. This is vitally important. Portrayal of Hayase, the betrayal of the story being a lot more clean and cut because of the CCG actually balances out rather well. You can look at both sides of the story as like the first part of Tokyo Ghoul being black and Tokyo Ghoul Re being white. One is the ghoul side of the story and the other side is the CCG. And that is kind of the overarching reality for it. Kaneki was a human that became a ghoul and now has become a CCG detective with some of the most powerful people that he used to fight. But if anything were to be kind of real and just, it's definitely not the CCG, as once again, the kind of portrayal of things being in the story, not being what they seem, is completely well and truly still there. The CCG is deceptive as ever, and they're not entirely made up on good intentions, nor the people that they suspected to be. The Washu family being a very long-lasted bloodline of pure-blooded ghouls trying to manipulate and create very powerful detectives and very powerful ghouls. Also working with the V organization, which is a ghoul-centered and orientated organization that helps them with a lot of different things. There is a much darker ploy and a much darker backstory and history with the CCG than it actually lets on to be. And more so the forefront of the CCG, which is high SA and kind of everyone surrounding him, does not know about this until it's kind of rooted up into the story and then everything cracks and crumbles and that tragedy is there waiting to appear again. The aspect of the CCG being bad or internally dark to begin with is actually a rather brutal thing. And it's very important that this was played the way it was. The kind of perception of Hayase and the perception of Carnegie and his quote unquote tragedy has more so shifted to its other side, to its more so real component that the morally just people in the story, the quote unquote good guys, are not as good as they actually seem to be. And a massive portion of the CCG is ran by ghouls. The irony in the CCG is completely prevalent and the depiction and slaughter of ghouls slowly starts to turn into a genocide. When Furuta takes out everything kind of in play and kind of asserts himself as the new leading chairman for the CCG, he runs everything the way he wants to, starting to completely destroy and disrupt absolutely everything, pushing forward a brand new agenda, which is kind of what the Washu family were doing in the background. Kaneki throughout this time relays back into his original Self, and it actually takes quite a bit. He doesn't necessarily go back to what he was prior to being reset in Tokyo Ghoul. If anything, his tragedy and his experience being reset and then starting and his experience in the beginning of Tokyo Ghoul Re plays a vital role to the character that he ultimately becomes after he remembers everything, after the Arima and Kaneki fight goes down and after Kaneki becomes the One-Eyed King. The perception of Kaneki then is completely different. No longer do we view Kaneki as a completely insane person or a character that is unknown or unsure on what's going on. He has a lot of drive. He has a lot of passion. He's still necessarily uneasy about everything and that is because the tragedy tethers are still ultimately there. But he's slowly growing and he's evolving and he's actually coming to terms with what he is and what he has been doing this entire time. He's seeing things, how things are meant to be seen and he is confiding in people that he never once would. At this point, a lot of the tragedy would seem to be kind of 
of drifting away. The dark nature of the story is still prevalent, but the onslaught of tragedy is not necessarily a thing. And I said that at the beginning of the video that never necessarily connected with Carnegie and Tokyo Ghoul Re, but more so its counterparts, the Washu family, the CCG, the V organization, and more so Furuta. We go through this period of kind of blissfulness at some points. It brings up this very bright intervention towards the end of the story regarding Carnegie and Toka's wedding, something that was well and truly needed to kind of cap off Carnegie's feelings and his emotion to make him feel like a real person. He's almost complete. However, with the bright moments, there is also a very deep, dark spiral, and it's elevated tenfold because of that bright moment. And that is the final arc of the story. That is Dragon. Everything that was tragedy or dark, manipulative, that was on the CCG's perspective, that was on the other side, comes flying back to Carnegie. And this is where we start to change the story, and this is where Sue Ishida kind of reconfirms that this story is not going to end the same way as it once was stated out to be. A lot of the events that happen in the Dragon Arc are very important. They actually bring Carnegie full circle, and without these events kind of in play, ultimately Carnegie could have met his demise. And fun fact, he was originally meant to. Sue Ishida wanted to obliterate absolutely everything and end on the most tragic note that you could ultimately think of. With a lot of characters dying, a lot of very dark and torturous events, and Carnegie ultimately dying at the end also. Devastation is what Sue Ishida called it. A train wreck. However, he did not take that approach. Instead, some of the things that were pivotal to Carnegie's progression to either the deep dark abyss of death or the bright and fruitful future that we actually got is changed. It's morphed a little bit and the importance of them is kind of undermined a little bit. However, they're still rather important and they still kind of linger to this day of what those endings actually were. A good pillar is Furuta and Carnegie's fight. Very pivotal, very full circle as it kind of closed off the story with Furuta and how he is kind of the big bad villain this entire time, but he wraps in human nature. Furuta is not as bad as one seemingly was, and the tragedy that overloomed the story slowly starts to clear up. You start to feel for Furuta a little bit. Everything that he went through was because he was forced down this route. He couldn't change or deviate from his path or he would be killed, so he kind of just bided his time and wants to do things his way so he could personally get what he wanted which is exactly what Carnegie was doing. Furuta and Carnegie share a lot of resemblance in a lot of different ways. They share almost identical tragedies to a certain extent. Probably the more significant and final pillar that comes into the story is Rize. Not only do we kind of finish off everything with her, but we also get a mental confrontation with Rize, which is actually extremely important. This was the groundbreaking moment that would either make or break Carnegie. Whether he came out of this dragon structure completely insane and dripping with insanity or if he would come out fruitful and ready to change absolutely everything and obviously it was the later option. Rize accepted him. Rize come to terms with what Carnegie was and what Carnegie turned into and Carnegie himself accepted what he was and what he has done and the devastation that he has recently caused but he wanted to benefit from it. He wanted to make things better. He wanted to make things right. Once again the tragedy starts to uplift and disappear. The final interaction the physical embodiment of what Rize was, kind of the manifestation of tragedy itself in a way. The reason why anything started to begin with was because of Rize and because of Furuta and being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So Carnegie kind of slaying down Rize is very metaphorical in a sense that Carnegie slayed his own tragedy. He beat the tragedy that was kind of bestowed upon him from the original portion of the story and kind of rewrote everything that he once was. He changed his narrative himself. Sue Ishida says it in a way that this ending is a train wreck in itself, and you can definitely see why. Maybe Kaneki was not meant to live a happy lifestyle with his children and with his wife, but if anything goes to show from Tokyo Ghoul Re, it's that Kaneki managed to cut out massive portions and defeat massive portions of his tragedy-driven story that he's been building since day one. He came out on top to an extent with a lot of loss and a lot of death and a lot of things to come to terms with, a lot of things to accept, and it may take 
take a lifetime to accept those things, but ultimately his happiness prevailed through it. His wants and needs to live a happy, healthy lifestyle is no longer for himself, but for the people surrounding him, for his wife, for his daughter, for his second child, his son that was evidently on the way. He wants to flourish in these ideas and he wants to benefit the world in a way that he sees fit. He has defeated his tragedy and led himself to a happy ending. With that being said, that is basically it. Let me know how you guys feel about Carnegie's journey. How do you feel about Tokyo Ghoulry? I know there's like a lot of comparisons between the two, but for me, they're both equally incredibly well done stories. And Carnegie's ending, as much as I necessarily didn't enjoy it, plays a lot of a metaphorical role in Carnegie coming to a conclusion, bringing forth a happy ending on his own terms and striving for it to make all ends meet. But with that being said, I'm actually going to end the video off here. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.